bring out our third company, Phoenix P2P. Presenting for Phoenix P2P is Chief Operating Officer Trip Welge. Imagine you're at home streaming the Chelsea game on your smartphone, connected device, or perhaps a, a smart television. It's a really exciting tie game. It's heading into the final few minutes. As you notice, there's two minutes left, and all of a sudden you hear all kinds of cheering and commotion going on in apartments around you and people around you. You're a little bit curious, so you hop on Twitter or Facebook or even do a quick Google search, and you find out that the game actually already ended. You're a little confused because uh, you've got two minutes left in, in your video, and what's happening is this really isn't all that uncommon. Uh, what you're experiencing is uh, latency that results from your video stream. And while this is a hypothetical example, this happens every day. Uh, most notably, um, with a Twitter partnership with Thursday Night Football back in the U.S., uh, tweets were coming across in a matter of seconds, as you could imagine, and the video was being delivered minutes later. Well, why does this happen? There's a couple different ways to stream video over the internet these days. And the most uh, notable for large audience would be a content delivery network-based solution that results in an awful lot of latency being introduced, the minute or two minutes that we were talking about earlier. On the other hand, there are ways to stream video in real time. And that is defined in our world as under half a second, really low latency. The challenge with these real-time applications is that they don't scale to reach enough concurrent, view uh, concurrent viewers. That is until now. Phoenix is here as the world's only scalable real-time video streaming platform. We can stream to millions of concurrent viewers with under half a second of latency. We license our product to our customers uh, through our APIs and SDKs that reach devices like Android, iOS, uh, as well as web and desktop browsers. In fact, this is so easy for us to use. We've heard that customers have been able to integrate our solution with as little as 30 minutes of work. Uh, we started a stream, actually, at the beginning of this uh, presentation. We're going to switch to our demo real quick. And uh, we'll notice that we're uh, concurrently streaming to about uh, 37,000 virtual users and maintaining a latency of under 300 milliseconds. We can head back to the slides. We'll talk about how this is happening. So in the uh, traditional world of reaching these large audiences with video, you use an HLS standard. There's chunking, content delivery networks, and a bunch of other acronyms in there that all la add up to the latency that we experience. Phoenix has delivered a platform. We've built it from the ground up to eliminate many of these, deliver the same video using several of our proprietary algorithms, including our interactive transport protocol, to deliver that same stream to that same audience in under half a second of latency. Additionally, we give our customers the option to add in our proximity multicast, which is a series of peer-to-peer -peer algorithms that help to further reduce cost, deliver on an even massive scale, and address the bandwidth constraints that exist at an internet scale as well as in a more micro environment. Now, how is this all possible? We're fortunate to be led by Dr. Stefan Birer, who has a ton of experience and is really a leading expert and authority in the video streaming world. Uh, he studied and began researching video streaming over a decade ago uh, during his studies, went on to work at enterprises like Skype, as well as helping to build Barclays Bank's trading platform. Stefan surrounded himself with some really talented folks that have worked on U.S. missile defense system, as well as GE, MRI, and imaging software, some mission-critical applications. And we're fortunate to have developed a number of use cases that we're going to the market with. Certainly the, the one-to-many alternative where we talked about the Chelsea game or a football game where you've got a broadcast truck or a, a device that's streaming to a really large uh, global audience. We also saw that the group chat space had a uh, kind of cap that was in place around 50 or maybe 100 people, and we can definitely expand that uh, for certain use cases where that may make sense. And on top of that, we're able to take that group broadcast, that group chat, and broadcast out out to uh, millions of concurrent viewers uh, when that's necessary. So where are we doing business today? Well, we're fortunate to have a couple paying customers, one of which is in the social media space and works with our iOS and Android devices to deliver real-time video to their users and really drive interactivity and engagement in the streams they're creating. Additionally, we're working with a webinar platform who replaced a content delivery network-based solution uh, to bring real-time and interaction to their audience of, of uh, webinars viewers. We're really pleased uh, to also be working on some active pilot projects, one of which is with a 
a large news conglomerate that's got 3,000 reporters in the field, and they're looking to innovate their technology stack and, and drive real-time video uh, to their uh, reporters and end users and viewers and consumers of their content. Additionally, we're working with an online education uh, platform that is really excited to bring the digital classroom uh, to real time and allow for all kinds of interactivity and other things that are causing challenges in the online education space. Where else are we looking to go? Well, we're really excited to get in the esports and video gaming world. Uh, AR and VR is certainly a hot topic, and real time will be uh, of much uh, importance there. And then the over the top television and internet uh, television market that we talked about with a Chelsea game or a, a football game. So we're going to switch back to the demo real quick and see how we did. Looks like uh, we tipped the 100,000 concurrent virtual viewer mark. We're still maintaining a really nice latency. Uh, we'll pop back over and, and wrap this up, but we're Phoenix P2P. If you've got content out there and you want to reach really large audiences and do so in a very innovative way with very low latency to drive interactive interaction and engagement with your users, stop by our booth, uh, shoot us an email, or reach out on social media. We're really excited to meet you and have a conversation. Thanks so much, everyone. All right, hey. judges. Yeah, um, great pitch. When I was listening to you, um, I felt that what you're saying is quite sort of interesting, it would be quite useful, but I didn't get the real sense of what the value is to the customer in terms of a pound figure in front of your technology and what the ROI is on using it. Mm -hmm. Can you deliver that? Yeah, I think that as you look at uh, ad revenue and the things that are powering much of, you know, take over the top content, engagement is critical to that. So the, the more you can bring engagement to those users and eliminate tweets and other things spoiling uh, their experience, the reality is I think a lot of folks who are consuming uh, take over the top television content, for example, are looking at a second screen integration and, and doing things like that. They're following on social media. Um, and hearing from content owners today, which is they want to be ahead of the Twitter sphere, uh, is what we've heard on a number of occasions. So I think the, the ROI there follows the engagement uh, of their users and the advertisers that follow in that market. I Have there been any like studies or research showing that that kind of lag hurts engagement or anything like so that? So they say at one second, you see, um, interaction starts to break down. So if you're having a two-way video conversation, for example, interaction, the lag becomes disruptive. In the seconds, you're purely consuming content. And, and often the markets that we outline, you are consuming content. But I think we give people an opportunity to even rethink the way content is delivered. Um, you know, could, could we here on TechCrunch stage have a couple bloggers that were selected receiving the stream in real time and be able to participate in the online stream uh, and bring unique ways uh, to interact with the video content? So I thought the, the pitch was great, by the way. Thank you. And I think the technology is really interesting. What I would love to, to see a bit more focus on or learn a bit more about is a clear use case that you really like, that you want to go after, where you'll build a clear go-to-market around. Because I think you're in a lucky position where your, your technology can be applied to, to multiple industries. and you'll either, I guess, wait to be pulled in several directions or you'll be focused and choose a direction you want to go in, which you think is the best direction for you, and build your go-to-market in that direction and so on and so forth. So if you can talk ab about that a little bit more. Sure. Um, so I totally agree with you. Um, we're, we're definitely excited to enter kind of this large content space. We've recruited an executive who's got experience uh, in the advertising world, working with large sports leagues and networks, and uh, we're hoping for him to kind of lead us into, into that space. I think what is most interesting uh, in the near term is finding the early adapters, right? I mean, there are people who are building interesting businesses and have content and are looking for different ways to distribute that um, and create amazing businesses. And I think that our PCAS platform supports all of that. So I, I do agree that um, we need to narrow our focus and what, we're, what we are focused on is uh, delivering content to large audiences. So there's I noticed you, uh, go ahead. Uh, there's an infrastructure cost here in, in doing this, right? So uh, it, when somebody's buying this web uh, network, this, this, you must have a large array of machines that are out there or use, a, or use somebody else's platform to, to do that. Uh, that costs money. So is the cost you know, comparable uh, to what they're currently paying for, for these services? Yes, yeah, so we've got an opportunity to drive down costs also, we think. Um, and we can give people the option to 
we're, we're working with Google Cloud right now, so we're uh, built on the Google Cloud platform. We're agnostic to our cloud provider, and eventually it may make sense to own our own data centers and, and, uh, and take that approach. But for the moment, um, that's the, the direction we've gone. And you know, the biggest input costs are bandwidth and server, uh, the servers that are running. And what we don't need to do, because we have uh, our flash crowd elasticity algorithms that account for the demand. So we didn't need to spin up servers to meet the 100,000 concurrent viewers uh, you know, a couple hours in advance and be paying uh, for those servers. The system itself adds them and, and provisions those resources. So we're able to keep costs down because oftentimes if you're streaming the Olympics, you're dedicating a bunch of uh, machines there and that comes with the extreme cost. Uh, we watched, uh, you know, HBO's G Game of Thrones, for example, has, has failed on a number of occasions because too many users came on at one time. And that's exactly part of the problem that's built into, or part of the solution that's built into our algorithm is, is to allow for that and timeout users rather than crash systems. Uh, and that helps us lower costs and be competitive. The proximity multicast and our peer-to-peer -peer network gives customers the option. It's not a requirement, but to really reduce costs. And we can drive costs down uh, to a fraction of what uh, traditional uh, streaming services might be today. Barbara? Yeah, so you've been talking about costs, about ROI, but we've been very vague about numbers, figures, and like what the real, like what's the pricing, what the real ROI yeah, so for, for any of your pilots. For low volume, we charge four tenths of a cent, uh, which is competitive in, in the market. We can drive that down to a tenth of a cent uh, pretty comfortably, depending on how many percentage of peer to peer and proximity multicast okay. folks may want to implement. And volume, as our volume goes up with our service providers, uh, we're able to capture volume savings and we pass that along uh, in some form to our customers. How did you pitch them, the, your current customer? What was the pitch? Uh, they had a solution, they were building a solution, they had a team of several engineers working on video, video's hard, uh, for several thousand dollars a month. Uh, we brought them a solution uh, that works and allows their engineers to focus on other things, build a great application, and know that video is taken care of. Uh, they have a real-time application. The social media business in particular okay. was kind of building a periscopy type business and said the opportunity exists to, dry, to do a real-time periscope and let people text chat and be a part of that conversation and direct the camera while you're on stage. And they couldn't scale past a couple hundred concurrent users and they have big dreams. And uh, we've streamed to several thousand concurrent users on the platform that wouldn't be possible with any other solution. Okay. What's your commercial traction to date? So we have two customers. Um, how, how much are you charging them? Oh, we're ch each of them we're charging uh, several thousand dollars a month. Okay. Um, and then we're in some pilot projects that would certainly be game changers as they're really large uh, businesses. But we charge, largely we charge on a volume-based business, right? So as, right. as they grow, we grow, yeah. um, and we're looking to grab content. And I think that as we look at some of these big um, media conglomerates, we don't need to replace their entire stack tomorrow, right? We, we yeah. need a channel, we need a piece of their business. The news reporting is a great example. They're considering building their own app and allowing this piece to be the, the foray into uh, getting that app into news reporters' hands rather than replacing all the technology stack they have in an existing deployment. So you called out, in your presentation, you called out um, BAMTech as <coughs> like a part of the solution, right? Yep. Um, so you'd be competing with them directly, Yeah, I right? think that, um, you know, I'm hoping that there's an open sandbox that everyone's going to be part providing different solutions in, but I, I do think that they bring app development. They bring so much more. Right now we're focused on uh, being the go-to go -to provider for large audience real-time video streams, so I think there's a world that exists where we could partner with them or be a part of, of what they do, um, and there's a world that exists where we'll probably be hoping to look at some of their customers and, and right, say, hey, they we just, do Right, because they just captured different. Riot, right? Like, they just yeah. got the rights to Riot stuff. Yep. You mentioned eSports as, as something you're looking sure. into. Um, they already do uh, WWE, they do NHL, PG, Obviously PGA. Disney, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Disney, right. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, they, they're obviously powerhouses in this, and they've been doing it for a decade, more than a decade. So it's interesting, like to me, you're talking about latency as your specific problem that you're tackling. Mm -hmm. And so you, do you see this as something where you would be a provider to them and you could slot in with their, with their already existing infrastructure? Because they own their own servers and they do pipe their own video right. and all of that. They also bring in a lot of other providers to, to provide that solution, right? And I think there's, uh, you know, there could be an alternative where you've got one of their uh, end customers who is really interested in real time and that's a conversation we could be a part of. We're also talking to customers who are uh, putting capital behind businesses to take on BAM directly and, and, and perhaps latency and some of the things that we do become a differentiator uh, to that strategy. Francesca. One of the markets you didn't mention, apologize if, 
apologies if I missed it, um, is online gambling. And it feels like this is a key market for you, for what you're providing, and it could massively add value. Why didn't you mention that? Um, we haven't started exploring online, ga online gaming uh, at all. I think it's obviously a controversial space. Um, as regulations are constantly moving, we've got a big enough market, we think, in, in front of us with the uh, esports and OTT content and all these other worlds. But um, that's certainly one. I, I see healthcare and, and, st and some other tangential markets that are places that our platform would certainly be very easily integrated and applied. Thank you. Other questions? Maybe just a little bit more about VR. How do you see yourself with the VR? You know? Sure. Well, you know, as, as, as VR and AR become, you know, more, more relevant, um, you're going to be sharing experiences with other people. And if mm -hmm. you're going to be not in the same room, but in the same room watching the same content, you need that uh, latency is obviously a, a critical component of that. And I think that goes from commercial use uh, to the, the business case uh, where you've got the virtual office and, and some other uh, applications of that. What are your key milestones in the next year? Um, so we definitely need to onboard a significant uh, global business uh, with, with a lot of content. That's uh, first and foremost. Uh, we're looking forward to deploying uh, our peer-to-peer -peer multicast uh, to a customer. And um, we're gonna always recruiting. So uh, continue to uh, recruit and uh, move forward. How big is your tech team? How did you manage to develop something so, so special and better than what's out there? Well, we've got a, our CEO um, you know, certainly studied video streaming. It's one thing to study it and, and understand it. Uh, he's a crazy passionate entrepreneur. Um, and you know, he, he took the vision and the, uh, you know, the study that he had, got commercial experience, okay. saw Skype and others, and then built, you know, helped be a part of Barclays Bank's communication platform and trading platform and saw how to handle large volumes of data and uh, adhere to real-time standards and then kind of went back to his video roots and said there's a way to start from the ground up and take where other people are failing at real time and, and being capped out at a couple hundred users. And rather than starting with an open source library uh, and trying to scale that and, and use it, he started from the ground up. And it's been a tremendous engineering exercise. Andreas has been a critical part of it. We've recruited a couple other really senior uh, engineers to lead the way. And then we're supported by uh, some more junior folks uh, who are passionate, equally passionate about video. Um, and we're climbing the mountain. And uh, we're excited about it. How much Great. capital have you raised to date? We've raised uh, just over $2 million and, and recently signed a term sheet for a $3.5 million uh, round that we'll be closing in the next couple weeks to, to get us uh, well a done. Congrats. to go. Yeah, thanks so much. All right, one more round of applause for Phoenix P2P. Thank you, guys. Yeah.